Hi, and welcome to Xbox Game Streaming, reducing latency and optimizing for the best mobile experiences. My name is Morgan Brown, and I'm a software engineer on the Xbox Game Streaming team. I'm also a speedrunner, which is part of why you keep seeing me give talks about latency. So today, we're going to talk about optimizing for the best mobile streaming experiences. We're going to start out by focusing on the idea of fidelity and a feature called direct capture. And then we're going to get into the concept of feeling at home, which I'll explain a little bit later, and focus on a feature called custom resolution. So as a motivation, this is one of my favorite promotional graphics that we have. We've started out streaming to phones and tablets and then added PC. And most recently, we've added the ability to stream to both current gen and last gen consoles. As a game developer or publisher, you can run on all of these platforms simply by publishing on Xbox. And the good news is you don't have to change your game in order for it to stream, but you can make changes to stand out from the crowd when your game is streaming. So let's talk about the idea of immersion in streaming. So your game is already immersive when it's played on an Xbox connected to a TV. That's how you designed it and tested it. The idea with immersion in streaming is we wanna bring the same player experience to other devices that people stream to. So that starts with the idea of maintaining fidelity, which is how do you make sure your game looks and feels as close as possible to playing on an Xbox? And then we extend that with the idea of feeling at home, which is how do you make it feel like your game was designed for the phone, tablet, or PC it's streaming to? So let's start out by diving into fidelity. We're gonna cover three topics here. We're gonna focus on low latency and then talk a little bit about sharp visuals and clear UI. So put simply, lower latency means better feeling controls. If you have low latency, button presses feel immediate, whereas with higher latency, players have to compensate and movement can feel unresponsive or sluggish. In Xbox game streaming, we've been working to have the best latency possible. We've been putting servers around the world and we've been optimizing our streaming stack. So direct capture is a recent latency optimization that I'll share more about and talk about how your game can benefit. In order to do that, let's talk about how a frame gets from your game to a user's screen when it's streaming. So we start up at the top with a game rendering and then presenting a frame. The next step, that big box, is capturing. The concept there is that we have to get it into a format that we can encode. That's going from the many different presentation options and formats that your game can use to a single format. In our previous version of this, 2019 through 2021, using the display hardware of the Xbox. After that, it goes into an encoder, which gets it ready to go over the wire for decode and render on the user's device so that they can see it. But let's zoom back into that capture box. What's happening here is, as I mentioned, we're, we're using the HDMI display hardware of the Xbox. The first thing that it has to do in order to get into that hardware is get through the present queue. Depending on your game, that can take somewhere between zero and 66 milliseconds. That's based on things like frame rate and whether you're double or triple buffering and performance and a couple of other options. After it gets back through the display hardware, it goes through a process called display write back that gets it into the final buffer that we can encode. That's a fixed 8.3 milliseconds. So as you might guess, that's a pretty good amount of latency. So what we've recently added is a direct capture path. And the idea here is if a frame is compatible with direct capture, which we'll talk about what that means in a minute, then it can go through a software implementation of all of those hardware features. And it's a whole lot faster, somewhere in the two to 12 millisecond range, instead of all of that time over on the right. So what's happening with direct capture? So first of all, we're eliminating waiting for vSync on uh, a TV that is not plugged into an Xbox console in a data center. Second of all, similarly, we are getting rid of any waiting around on double or triple buffering to flip. And we're also not scaling to and from that TV that we're not using that might be uh, normally scaling to uh, 1080p or 1440p or 4K and then scaling back down to stream resolution. We can skip all of that. And in the end, we can save up to 72 milliseconds that way. So I wanna show you what that looks like. And I have a video for you in a sec, but it's gonna go by fast. So let me explain what we're looking at here. This is a game where when you press a button, the reticule flashes red and you blow up an alien spaceship. So we're gonna start off with that state 
on the left where the reticule is white. But if you look carefully at that white thing in the lower right corner, there's a green LED lit up by the A. What that is is an Xbox One controller monitor. The LEDs are wired into the buttons on an Xbox One controller. So as soon as you press a button, that LED lights up. Then later on, we get to that state on the right where the input has gotten to the game, it's processed it and shown a frame and it's gotten to the screen where the reticule is red and the spaceship, if it's under the reticule, is blowing up. So what we're going to see here is three different setups. One is that we have a console connected directly via HDMI to a TV, no streaming involved. And that's going to be in the upper left corner. In the upper right corner, what you're going to see is streaming with direct capture. And in the lower left, what you're going to see is streaming with that old display pipeline. And what you're watching for is those reticules to turn red. So you're going to see it come together pretty quickly for both HDMI and direct capture. And then you're going to have to wait a second for the display pipeline. So let's take a look. OK, so hopefully at this time, you're thinking to yourself, how do I get direct capture in my game? So the good news is many games get direct capture automatically. However, since direct capture reproduces hardware features and software, we're adding more support over time, and some of those features are limited by performance. So you can see that table at the bottom of the slide that has where we are right now, which features we haven't, haven't implemented so far. It also has the nice latency win for direct capture, but it also shows a resolution difference. So let's talk a little bit more about resolution in a sec. I do also just want to mention we have tooling coming up soon where you'll be able to test your game and find out uh, am I getting direct capture? And if I'm not getting direct capture, what do I need to change? OK, so let's talk a little bit about direct capture and resolution. So uh, as you likely know, more pixels mean more quality. But in streaming, that's only up to the stream resolution. If your game is rendering at a higher resolution than the stream resolution, then we have to scale it back down to the stream resolution. And at that point, we might be introducing scaling artifacts. By a similar token, more pixels also means more latency. Uh, that's both because we have to spend time doing the scaling and because it can uh, spend time in other steps of the streaming process. So we try to achieve the best quality latency balance when streaming. Today, that's 1080p on console and PC, and it's 720p on mobile. However, that's something that we expect will change over time based on different devices, network conditions, and improvements to the streaming stack. So the solution that we'd like to provide to you is give you the ability to decide on the fly. So the way that we're going to do that is with the Display Details API. This is something that we've been working on. And when you're streaming, it returns the best resolution for a quality latency balance. What I mean by that is it's going to guarantee direct capture, it's going to avoid any extra scaling latency, and it's going to minimize scaling artifacts. And we'll have more on the Display Details API a little bit later. A few more latency tips. If your game has a 60 FPS performance mode and a 30 FPS quality mode, we recommend defaulting to the 60 FPS performance mode. When your game is streaming, your streaming players will appreciate that it's a little bit snappier. If you're able to optimize latency for everyone, console players and streaming, everyone's going to appreciate it. Uh, Pix is your friend. It's my, it's my favorite tool for diagnosing latency issues. And finally, I have to give a plug for my old GameStack Live 2021 talk that you can find on YouTube called Compensating for Streaming Latency, How to Build a Time Machine, that talks about how to compensate for whatever latency you do have while streaming. Next up, I want to talk about sharp visuals briefly. So a couple of tips that will make your visuals sharper while streaming. First of all, use the preferred resolution that you get from the Display Details API to remove extra scaling passes and any extra artifacts that you get out of that. Second of all, if you're lowering your stream resolution in order to get direct capture, that might leave you more performance in your game for other improvements. So for example, you might be able to turn up anti-aliasing, load in better models or textures, use fancier lighting, or turn up ray tracing. We recommend testing with the Streaming Content Test app or our DevTools website to see video compression and scaling in your game for yourself. And if you are seeing video compression artifacts, uh, a couple of tips. One is try fewer particles. Sometimes having a whole bunch of particles floating around on the screen can be hard on the encoder. 
And second of all, kind of by the same token, try reducing high frequency objects. What I mean by high frequency is those are things that change a whole lot from pixel to pixel to pixel to pixel. Uh, one example of that is grass way off in the distance. That can also sometimes be harder on encoding. All right, one more topic in Fidelity is clear UI. So we want to relate a common feedback that we get from our users, which is, this game looks great, but I can't read the tiny text on my phone. So a good start is to add text size to your game's accessibility settings to improve readability for users on any device, including TVs. And even better, you can call the X Game Streaming Get Stream Physical Dimensions API, which gets the size of the stream on the user's device. You can set it, use it to set a good default, and then let users change their accessibility settings as needed. So let's dive into feeling at home. Uh, as a reminder, that's the idea that you want to feel like the game was designed for the device that it's streaming to. So we're going to talk about three things, full screen rendering, which is what we're going to focus on, and then talk a little bit about input and some other adaptations. But let's start with full screen rendering and a feature we've been working on called custom resolution. So here's Minecraft on a 16 by 9 TV, and it looks just as good as you'd expect because it was designed to run on a TV like that, as most Xbox games are. Here it is, streaming to a square tablet. Note the black bars on the top and the bottom. Here it is on a portrait device. Note the very large black bars on the top and bottom. So the idea with custom resolution is we want to let you render at any aspect ratio and use the resolution that's the best match for the user's device. It includes the ability to resize on the fly for situations like window resizing or rotating a device. And it's designed for ease of porting from PC. One more motivation is the idea of better native touch. Native touch is the idea of being able to touch things on the screen in a game. So for example, here in Minecraft, there's a D-pad rendered by the game, which means it does get moved around by the letter bars. And so you can see on the left two images on that tablet device, it's a little bit hard to reach, especially on that portrait device, because there are black bars in the way. Whereas on the right, if we're able to render full screen, it's right where it's supposed to be and right where the designers intended it, and it's much more comfortable for users. So let's say that you would like to add custom resolution to your game. Let's dive into how to go about that, and we're going to go into detail on each of these four steps. Starting with get display details. Here in this code sample, we're going to start by checking X game streaming is streaming. This just tells us, is the game streaming right now? If it's not, we can go ahead and pick a hard-coded default in this example, 1440p. But let's say that we are streaming. Then what we're going to do is we're going to call X game streaming get display details. It's going to fill in an X game streaming display details struct. And we're going to pull the preferred width and preferred height out of that, which is the ideal width and height to stream to. And then I want to quickly talk about a couple other parameters that we're passing to X Game Streaming Get Display Details. We're passing in 2560 by 1440 and 32 by 9 and 4 by 3. That's the set of your game's constraints. So a max resolution and the aspect ratios that it can handle. The idea here is that we're going to simplify the output of the API and limit it to only resolutions and aspect ratios that your game can handle. So then the next step is to pick a resolution. So some games, such as Minecraft, are designed for arbitrary resolutions. And if you can do that, that's fantastic. You can just take the preferred width and preferred height. Those are the best match for the client screen and start working with that. However, a lot of other games choose specific resolutions to support. That might be in order to test those specific resolutions or because of performance constraints or because your UI is a certain size. That's OK, too. There are other parameters that you can get off of X Games Streaming Display Details in order to find the closest match to what you support, and we'll have an example of that in a minute. Uh, if your game on PC just has a resolution picker, that's OK. You can just let players choose, and that's fine, too. The punchline here is that any resolution in bounds works and enables direct capture. All right, so here's a quick example of what picking a resolution might look like if you support a fixed set of resolutions. In this example, we support three resolutions. And so the way that we're going to pick is we're going to start by figuring out the preferred aspect ratio. We're going to divide the preferred width by the preferred height. And then if it's less than, say, 4 by 3, then we'll pick a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and go with 1440 by 1080, for example. If it's somewhere in the middle, we'll go with 16 by 9 and pick 1920 by 1080. 
And if it's a little bit wider, then we will go with 21 by 9 and pick 1920 by 800. Now that we've picked a resolution, we're going to set stream resolution. That's right, we're actually putting your game in charge of stream resolution here. Just call XCM Streaming set resolution with the width and height you're going to render. Because it feels a little like changing resolution in a PC game with a quick pause and pop, it's best in response to user actions like starting a stream, resizing a window, or rotating a device. You'll get an update event when that happens. Next up, start rendering. So here, we're just using standard APIs for rendering. It's going to be the same as any other resolution or PC. Step one is set your window size using the create window or set window pause APIs. Next up, allocate a back buffer with dimensions you're planning to render. Next up, render, do your magic, make it look good. And finally, present. This is the same present API as you would normally use. The only thing that's a little bit different is there are some scaling parameters to that method, where normally 1x scale is either 1920 by 1080 or it's 4K. Here, 1x is your stream resolution instead. And once you've done all of that, success, you are rendering full screen. And I have to say, your game looks great. OK, a couple of other topics I want to talk about. Let's start by talking about input. So if you have an Xbox game, it most likely takes controller input. And that's great for Xbox players. It's also good for a lot of PC players and some mobile players. Uh, however, a lot of mobile players prefer to use touch with games. And we encourage that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it because I am going to recommend the Play Anywhere the Xbox Touch Controls talk in this track by my colleague Aaron Chavez, who's going to do a much better job. I recommend checking it out. But I do want to talk a little bit about keyboard and mouse. So not everyone knows Xbox has supported keyboard and mouse for a few years now. And we're working on adding it to streaming for PC users. But you can start adding it to your game right now, and your console keyboard and mouse users will appreciate it. It will light up in streaming when we finish adding it. Finally, let's talk about a couple of gameplay adaptation ideas. One is subtitles. So uh, hopefully your game has subtitles just for accessibility for hard of hearing users, uh, but it's also especially useful for mobile situations, cases where folks might have to mute their phone, or they're in a noisy environment, or their headphones just aren't as good as a home theater system. One other idea is having settings per device. So I might play your game on my phone, and I might also stream it to PC, and I might also play it on my home console. And it would be really annoying if every time I switch devices, I have to go back and fix the brightness settings before I can just get back into the game. So the idea here is you can call the X Game Streaming Get Client ID API to find out what device am I streaming to, and that way I can store those settings per device, and players can jump right back in as soon as they're ready to go. OK, so to wrap up, what did we talk about? So first of all, direct capture lowers latency. Use the Display Details API to limit resolution and get direct capture in your game. Second of all, custom resolution is going to improve native touch controls and the user experience without those black bars. So if you have PC resolution handling code, turn that on and use Display Details to choose the right resolution. And finally, think about making your streaming players feel at home on the device that they're streaming to. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the rest of XFest, and I can't wait to stream your game.